All right. So thank you everyone for uh, coming to our last Independent Living Across Canada Day webinar. Um, so it, just a quick reminder uh, that if you are joining us via Zoom, um, that you mute your microphone so there is no feedback. Additionally, there will be time for questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, however, feel free to type your questions in the Zoom chat box at the bottom of the page. Um, or if you are joining us through Facebook Live, you can also comment on there as well. Um, finally, again, we are recording this webinar for those who are not able to attend today's celebrations. Um, so our last webinar of the day is called Supported Employment, a story of disability to uh, ability. Um, and we have Hannah Heffler, who is a team lead case management services and career practitioner at Teamwork Cooperative. And today she will be sharing Tyler White's story um, and how he found his way to his first dream job through supported employment. So uh, without further ado, I'm passing it over to Anna. Thank you, Caitlin. Um... Thank you everybody for hopping on late in the afternoon and uh, almost good evening, I guess. Um, so I'm Hannah Heffler. I work for Teamwork Cooperative. Uh, we're an employment agency here in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. We're one of the Nova Scotia work centers here in the province. And I know a few people are, are not here in Nova Scotia or across the country. Um, so yeah, we're, we're one of the employment uh, offices here in Nova Scotia and we help people with disabilities and uh, everyone um, looking for work um, in Nova Scotia and today I really wanted to share uh, a story uh, with about one of my clients um, who I'll introduce here in a second um, but I chose the title supported employment a story of disability to ability um, because as we know, and, and if some of you are service providers and provide the support to persons with disabilities, often it's their disability that's seen first, um, especially if it's a visible disability. And so many uh, abilities can be overlooked if they're overshadowed. So I really wanted to choose a title that really, um, you know, spoke to Tyler's abilities and what his initial barriers were when he came to see us. So. Um, that's a little bit why I chose that title and we've seen the disability in brackets before because it really is about the abilities of what you can do when you're looking for employment. So with no further ado, let's share a little bit about Tyler. Oops. So this is Tyler White and I did reach out and get his permission to share his story. In fact, I actually tried to get Tyler on this webinar with me, but he was out and about today, so he couldn't join us, but that's okay. He gave me permission to share. So I met Tyler um, way back in 2015. He was a, a young man of 22 then, I do believe. <laughs> And he had graduated high school in 2012, uh, had been in Nova Scotia, you can stay in high school a little bit and uh, work on some skills. So that's what he had been doing. He had stayed in high school for a year and then he, um, he did our ACE program, uh, which no longer exists, it's a different program now, but that was the um, Access to Community and education employment program. So it was again, another program for a year that really just tried to help build Tyler's skills. But when he came to see us 2015, he was looking for his first job and Tyler identifies with an intellectual and, and learning disability, um, has, has some barriers around communication. Um, so not always sometimes the easiest to understand, but as you get to know Tyler, that quickly dissolves and you can, um, you can understand him very easily. But he had been job searching for quite a few months um, with his mother and um, he wasn't really getting anywhere. Um, employers really were only seeing Tyler's disabilities, not his abilities. And he was really ambitious, had a great attitude. He was just really excited to get his first job. 
Um, but employers were really missing out on what Tyler's immense potential could be um, because of disability. So that was our job is to um, really help Tyler develop a supportive employment plan that really did highlight um, uh, his abilities and, and um, help reduce those barriers that he was facing in our labor market. And Nova Scotia can have a really tough labor market. And uh, of course now it's, it's even a little bit tougher um, but uh, I'm going to share a little bit more of that story in a little bit. So, so here was Tyler, uh, 2015. His parents had initially come with us um, to see us because they had an opportunity uh, within their workplace. Um, so they themselves were trying to job carve a little bit and uh, needed our help to make that happen. And, and as most parents, uh, they want their best for their child, but um, it's not easy to be the person trying to get your child a job. And, and I really think that's where that supportive employment service providers offer great value to parents and, and individuals, maybe with those intellectual disabilities or developmental disabilities, um, to kind of breach that, that service, right? Um, unfortunately, even with the use of the Opportunity Fund, which is a federal fund for persons with disabilities, we couldn't make this position in this office work. Um, so back to the drawing board, we went. And uh, I think just before this workshop, there was one that talked about disclosing disabilities. So Tyler learned all about how to talk about his disability, how to um, be more conscious on how to talk about that with employers. So he learned all about that. He attended all of our workshops um, and he always did it with a smile and he was very ambitious. Anything that I would ask him to do, he, uh, he trusted me to know that I was guiding him down the right path um, towards his dream job. And uh, sometimes as career practitioners, we don't always know, but uh, what motivates us is that willingness to try, and Tyler certainly had that, so we kept going. Um, but after a few months, uh, still no job. Um, we tried another training program uh, here in Nova Scotia. We have a couple of um, uh, pre-employment, I guess, if you will, skills training programs that really can help develop some someone's skills and customer service or or office admin or whatever they might be looking for. And and so we were we thought we try this. So we tried options, and unfortunately, that wasn't a good fit for Tyler. Um, he just didn't mix with the combination of of people that were there. And as a as a young almost young kid coming out of, uh, you know, a few years out of high school, um, he just really wanted to work. Um, this is not what he wanted to do. But again, his willingness to try um, was noted. And so we went back to the drawing board again. Um, next, within that supportive employment model, we moved into job development. And for, for someone like Tyler, um, his frustration is you know, job searching, and, and we see that with many clients in, in Nova Scotia, um, the, the skill requirements for some of those jobs that you might find on the internet or, you know, in your local job search, um, a lot of the time folks with disabilities don't always meet all those qualifications and those skills. And it, it can be a real deterrent on um, applying, first of all, um, but also can be really frustrating and really like bring down their confidence um, in, in what their abilities already are. And that's where that job development and that job carving piece comes in and uh, really uh, to focus on Tyler's abilities. What can Tyler do right now? And, and it's up to us to help identify some roles in the community um, and help employers understand what they might need um, when we're looking at job carving opportunities. Um, we looked at law offices, we looked at uh, police headquarters, we looked at lunch monitor positions. Uh, Tyler was a porter in the hospital volunteering. We looked at trying to carve a job out of that role. Um, still nothing until almost a year later um, with some really hard work um, from our job development team. Tyler, as you can see in his uniform, is wearing a Cineplex uh, uniform. We found him a position um, working in a job card position, not one that existed uh, at the Cineplex theaters here in Halifax. Uh, and he has been there for the last years. So he's very, very proud of this job. And um, 
really, as he would say, is it's his dream job. So um, did we know that when he first came to see us? No, not at all. But uh, we really had to look to what um, Tyler's abilities were. And it really was a combination of uh, wraparound supports from our team, including myself as a career practitioner, our job development, our workshops, um, and our ESP, uh, our job coaches. Um, I'll talk a little bit more in, in a little bit about those folks um, that really helped support Tyler in finding this role. But we also needed a larger team than that, those natural supports um, to come in. So I'm going to talk more about that. But Tyler finally found his dream job working at Cineplex. And his role there was cleaning the concession stands, um, maintaining the whole front lobby. And um, what Sean McEwen, I don't know if anybody was just on Sean's presentation from Alberta. Um, you know, he talked about disability improving the workplace culture. Um, that is so true for Cineplex. Um, and, and we've been out of the picture for quite some time. This is, you know, he's been working there for so long. But initially, when Tyler really got a handle on the role after some support, you know, their workplace culture improved. Their, their you know, their cohesiveness as a team improved. Um, Tyler was in the front end. He, he showcased his abilities. But he was obviously, you know, um, part of the team. and. Uh, patrons going to the theater noticed that and that was showing up in some of their customer comments um, quite a bit actually um, so much that they actually reached out and let us know that um, so their whole workplace culture changed in fact that one theater doing that gave word to the next theater to do the same thing so the Dartmouth one started looking at like hey wait a minute, we want, we want to do that too. So, um, you know, it, it has a domino effect and it's, it's, um, it's, um, catches employers attention, but it's not always easy. Right. Uh, and if you're a service provider on here, you know that, um, yeah, and you've been there. <laughs> so that is Tyler. Um, let me, so what would I say were some of pillar, some of the pillars of Tyler's success? And you know we help we help over a thousand people at least a year find employment, and over half of those people are persons with disabilities. Um, there are some certain key traits uh, around someone when they come in that we know we can help support, and uh, you know that they're not necessarily hard work skills. Um, we look for people's abilities, but these are some of the, the, I mean, I could have picked a lot more around Tyler, but these were some of his pillars of success that I felt really helped motivate us as a team um, to help find him the best fit role, which turned out to be the Cineplex. And I don't know if you noticed in my slideshow, I picked a movie theater, <laughs> my background. Uh, so I hope uh, Tyler will be impressed. <laughs> so, I mean, immediately Tyler, um, his attitude just stood out. And, uh, you know, when he first started with uh, Cineplex, I'm going to keep my eye on the time here too. Um, he, he did that orientation. He stood right next to the manager giving the tour. So they started a whole bunch of people at once, uh, a new team, um, probably some young, young, younger teenagers than that but Tyler's first one up there next to the manager I mean his attitude was really super positive and and he just wanted to keep going he was really invested I mean he did all the key things that we asked him to do by going to workshops learning um learning how to help himself too it's not just about us doing things for our clients it's about teaching them as well but sometimes we really do have to support them and and uh, be there for when things don't go all that well so he was very invested in his in his um his work uh he's reliable strong work ethic he never misses any days at work so you know as sean talked about that in his previous this is actually a cost saving for cineplex to know that they don't have to worry about you know rehiring for this position or that tyler's going to call in sick all the time he's you know he's very reliable strong work ethic and um this next one try new things it's okay to fail you know, I think that's really a strong message that um, we 
convey to our clients and, and those with disabilities that, um, you know, if your confidence is down, that it's okay to fail. Um, and that's where that supportive employment model really does come in because we don't always know if it's going to be the right fit. We try. Um, but Tyler's willingness to try things and be okay um, if they fail is a very important thing in his, in his job search and the, that um, quest for his best fit. Um, confidence uh, is, you know, I deliver a workshop just on confidence and it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. You just don't develop confidence overnight and, and a lot of job seekers are, uh, you know, very confident in their job search, especially when they're coming to see us. And neither was Tyler, um, but I have a confidence quote from him in the next slide, our next couple of slides. Um, it really is something that's built through all the pieces um, of that supportive employment model and, and the, the whole team, natural supports, family supports, um, and that, that belief, our belief in them um, helps build that confidence. So um, he certainly gained his he was positive um, and ultimately he had a lot of passion. Um, when he got that job at Cineplex, it really was him not only giving back to himself, but for him, it was giving back to his community. He was a part of the community and uh, you know, his passion was driven by that. So, so just a little quote from, uh, um, Rick Hansen, uh, each of us has the ability to make a difference. And uh, I chose um, Rick Hansen um, because my neighbor, uh, who's also, a, he's a paraplegic, um, knows him quite well. Uh, some cool fishing stories about the two of them in their wheelchairs, uh, fishing and, and very, very independent um, and knowing what their abilities are too and, and never, and willing to try and, and fail and be okay with that, right? Um, and I, I pick it also because the worst thing that we see, and I had to write this down for a second, um, is employers who only see and make judgments based on um, the disability and they really miss out on seeing what person's abilities are because they are overshadowed by the, the disability. It's a big part of our work and this education piece and awareness is um, really plays into how we support not only the client but also employers um, so that they're not missing out on a on a big talent pool um, that that could be available to them so that's why i picked that quote so this was a quote from Tyler, um, and this was shortly after um, he started his work, after a few months. Um, so I'll just, uh, maybe I'll read it out there for the interpreters. What makes me feel confident is that I have learned so much from working and being able to do so much more on my shifts. Also the support I have from my managers. If I need them for anything, they are very good to me and give me good guidance. They have the trust in me to do a good job and being responsible on doing my task and to reach goals. And that makes me confident, feel confident in my job. They also give me good comments and praise me for doing a good job. My parents also give me confidence because they know how hard I work and I always, and always support me and give me guidance. Um, so, you know, it's something that's really developed since Tyler started work. And, um, you know, he came in very positive, but work has really given him this independence um, that he can do things and he has those abilities. Um, so uh, now from that other side of things, and as, as, uh, as we know, uh, we never do anything solely on our own. Um, and uh, the importance of that family support, some people don't have that strong family support, but that's where you know, that team of employment support comes in or those natural supports in the workplace. Um, so supports can come from a variety of, um, of things, right? From different people in our lives. For Tyler's mother, um, she's beaming. Um, this is a bit of an older quote as well, but uh, um, so proud of Tyler. Tyler and his family would like to thank Teamwork. That's not a plug there, by the way, <laughs> for their wonderful support and encouragement. Teamwork is an amazing organization which provides a moral support to the community by developing and supporting employment for persons with disabilities. The organization is an asset to our communities and deserves the support of employers, families, and caregivers. Also, I'd like to thank Cineplex, Scotiabank Theatre, 
for giving Tyler this opportunity. Hats off to all the management and staff for their assistance and kindness. I can't say enough about their positive work environment, willingness and encouragement so employees reach their potential of becoming valuable employees. And I think that that stems across all employees in the workplace, but uh, the employer certainly would say, um, you know, how do I get 10 more Tyler's um, because his work ethic and his reliability and his enthusiasm for for um, taking care of the whole front end was so high. So, you know, it really opened the employer's eyes on, um, you know, what they had originally been missing out. So um, it's worked out really well. So again, those family supports and natural supports are really important. Um, his mother was, you know, a, a key player in helping develop Tyler's skills, uh, including throwing some popcorn all over her garage floor so that he could learn how to sweep, um, you know, a whole movie theater, which is not easy with those little tiny kernels as, as if you've been to a theater. It gets pretty messy in there, um, except for when Tyler's working. So, um, so uh, let me just check my time here. So I got 10 minutes here and I'm going to leave um, just a couple minutes for questions if there's any. Um, a big part of our final wraparound supports and, um, you know, in Tyler's case, um, it, it was very pivotal in him maintaining and, and keeping that, that position um, and not just leaving the employer to onboard and teach Tyler everything that he needed to know. But this, these are our post-employment supports and it's a, always a, a huge part of supportive employment, not just for folks with intellectual disabilities, but really anyone in, um, you know, in a workplace that maybe they've been out of the labor market for a while or, or maybe they're struggling with their mental health. Having conversations with your employer about that's not always the easiest thing. And sometimes you just need to be able to communicate with, um, you know, a job coach or an ESP, somebody that can really help you uh, organize your thoughts and your communications around um, what you need and possibly some accommodations. Um, some of the previous com com uh, presentations talked about that. So our employ employer uh, support practitioners, um, they, I'm oh, sorry, just going to, they're, uh, they're really uh, helpful in reinforcing and focusing on the abilities of the client. So we've gotten the person a job, maybe we've gotten some funding in place for subsidies for the employer, but now they're on site with that client, really honing in on what this client's abilities are and reinforcing those skills, teaching them new ones, helping onboard that training if it's needed, um, and uh, really providing that employer support. So it's never just a one-way street with us uh, when we're providing support. It's client and employer and uh, allowing the employer to ask questions that normally um, they might not ask if, if we weren't involved as a, as a post-employment support or a job coach. Um, and, and this is a big thing that, you know, as we get to know employers and we build rapport, um, a lot of employers, they, they don't know what they don't know and, uh, you know, not knowing about accommodations or, you know, maybe like for Tyler's case, how to um, communicate with Tyler um, and understand, um, just being able to ask questions and, and uh, learn, right? That openness to learning um, is so pivotal. Sometimes we come across some unconscious bias that we really need to bring to the attention of the employer. Um, and uh, we can do that in a variety of ways, uh, and we do. There's lots of lots of support out there, but you know, as far as Tyler's um, ESP supports, job coach supports, you know, bus training, that independence, you know, teaching how to sweep. He spent three months on site, side by side with Tyler, making sure that he knew that job and and that he felt comfortable, um, you know, to eventually be faded out and and learn. Um, to do this on his own. Um, and the employer felt supported too, so that they could ask questions. Um, and, and getting, um, you know, Tyler, Tyler's teammates to really embrace him as a team member. You know, he had a headset. This is a funny, funny little story. He had a headset given to him at first, um, but it was radioed and uh, Tyler, yeah, not too many people could understand his, some of his communications, but he really wanted to fit in the employer. The manager didn't want to take the headset away. So they came up with a solution, gave him one that, um, you know, he didn't really need to talk anyway. He was cleaning the front end. Um, but so he wore one 
um, that didn't work. And uh, Tyler was totally fine with that. He, he's, he just wanted to fit in. He wanted to make sure that he was part of that team and the team wanted that as well. So um, they were seeing his abilities, not his disabilities. And, and really it was, it created more of an inclusive uh, environment for, uh, for everyone, uh, Tyler especially. So those ESPs, and, and we did that for a good year. We faded out, obviously, but uh, they were very pivotal in that, that learning phase um, of employment. And uh, a couple more minutes here. Um, so I threw this in um, because I think it's a big part of Tyler's story now. Um, fast forward five years, three months ago, um, as, as the world knows, we were introduced to the coronavirus and COVID-19. Um, and Tyler now has become, um, this has become his world and his experience as well. And this, this doesn't, it, it's not a great thing. Obviously, this is not a great thing. But what, what's great about Tyler experiencing this is he's experiencing everything that all other people in Canada, Nova Scotia, his community, his teammates, uh, his coworkers, I should say, the world are facing um, for the first time in Tyler's life. He's he's you know he's on EI. Um, he never knew what that would be like. Um, if he hadn't had this chance, he might still be looking for a job. Um, and the cinema has actually updated him very regularly on where his position's at and and the state of um, entertainment, I guess, if you will. And, uh, you know, he's been given some positive emails that, you know, his job is secured, um, he'll be back, and he's probably going to be needed more than ever because his role is probably going to be one of the more important roles in that theater, which will be cleaning and making sure those concession stands, if they're used, um, are, are used. Um, so, you know, he's, he's remained positive. I expected nothing else. Oh, somebody's is that somebody drawing on there <laughs> awesome um so and 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 in this trying time this time of crisis we have seen more employers looking past disability and seeing people's abilities um which has been amazing so we've had quite a few people that normally might not interview all that well or might be overlooked because of disability are now getting hired so there's a bigger story brewing, um, even bigger than Tyler's. Um, and I hope after this is all said and done, that will come out in, a, in, in some way. Um, so I think uh, I have some room for any questions. And this was a campaign, just to finalize here. Uh, we have a campaign that celebrates the success of our clients and uh, the hard work that they've done and, and where they where their growth plan has come. So this is our Humans of Teamwork Bridge campaign. And Tyler, of course, is on that. Uh, his face is hanging on our walls. And uh, I guess we like to showcase them when we can. But uh, so that's where that comes from. So I'll open it up to any questions, if anybody has any. Mm -hmm. So we'll just wait a few minutes, but um, I guess I have one. This is Caitlin. Um, and I guess uh, my question is, is um, you know, maybe not in Tyler's story or with Tyler, but in general, do you think, um, you know, in terms of advancement and even, you know, uh, Cineplex is a place where there is room to move forward. Um, do you find that that does happen on a regular, pretty regular basis, even with other, uh, you know, cases that you or people that you have worked with? Just, um, just, to, just to paraphrase, like, are employers um, opening up more to that possibility of job carving in that? Yeah, happen? yeah. And even moving, because I know with job carving, it can be great because you're, you're filling the need of, of the business. Um, I guess more so if down the road, if, um, you know, say, let's, uh, let's say if Tyler wanted to advance at Cineplex and he wanted to do mm -hmm. um, another job there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would, yeah. Would they be more open to that? Yeah, and I, I think it, it goes back to the abilities um, 
of the client too, right? Um, for for Tyler, um, and there's there's probably in Cineplex. I have other examples. Um, there's only so many roles within the theater, unfortunately. And and Tyler's abilities will not be on cash. Um, you know that wouldn't be a skill that he can really develop and be fast and efficient at, right? So um, will his his duties expand? Um, probably not a whole lot, but does he want them to? He doesn't. He's very comfortable and he takes care of that whole, if you've been to that theater, I think probably, it's huge. <laughs> um, you know, he, he takes care of that whole front end there. And, and I think when we first started, it really was just you know, a small area, but he's, he's opened up to doing the whole theater now. But mm -hmm. I think for Tyler, he actually really enjoys that. Now mm -hmm. we have other employers, that is not the case. Um, there's absolutely, I th and I think that's where, you know, that, that ESP support and really getting to know the employer and letting them ask those questions around disability. We have a wonderful employer that has hired a lot of um, people that are deaf and uh you know they have really embraced that culture and and that whole inclusive hiring where they're like who else who else what other disabilities do you have right they they just recognize that their workplace culture has um changed so much in a positive way that they're really just trying to um you know to to hire more people with disabilities and, and more complex disabilities as well, right? Um, so, you know, you have employers that are really starting to think out of the box. It's, it's changed a lot in 10 years, I think. It's, it's gonna continue to change. And I'm sure COVID will have something to do with it. Uh, you know, there's always a silver lining in anything. And, uh, you know, that, that story I just shared, we've had a few people that really have struggled to find work and uh, have put themselves into those essential front line in the initial part of this crisis um, and have been hired and really were willing to step up and, and take those jobs when nobody else wanted them. And uh, that, that's, a, that's a great story, it gives me goosebumps mm. and one that's really gonna have to be shared in a different time, but uh, there'll, there'll be a lot of learning, but employers are um, they're definitely, I think, but I think they need to be supported as well and until they know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. And that, that is very, very true. So that's great. All right, I'll just check one more time. Um, all right, so unless there are any other questions. It's I almost time. People are hungry. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so thank oh. you so much, Hannah, uh, for you. coming on and um, doing this webinar today. Uh, and again, thank you to everyone who participated throughout the day um, and who helped plan this online event. Um, and yeah, that's it for us folks, but have a good rest of your evening. Great. Thanks. Great. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.